Before I start off, I would like to explain. I have been asked, of course, many times, uh, why do you do what you do? Yeah, I, I do what I do concerning Islam and not only Islam, but also anywhere where I feel the Constitution is being not represented. Where I feel that we are losing the Constitution, our constitutional rights. Where I feel that feelings and things are beginning to take over the Constitution. Uh, we do not only deal with the subject of Islam on April the 21st. Uh, we will be in Sanford, Florida, uh, concerning the situation with George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin. So actually everywhere where we feel the United States is losing its liberty, losing its freedom, people say, why do you do it? I lived 30 years overseas. I lived 30 years in Europe, and when I came back to America, I was completely horrified by the condition of America. Yeah, it was, it was, like, it was like someone who had been locked away for 30 years in prison, and all of a sudden they get out of prison and they walk outside and they don't recognize the world anymore. The world has completely changed. And when I came back to America after 30 years, I was horrified by the condition of America. I was horrified by the moral, spiritual, and economical condition of America. I was horrified by, by our condition. And, and, I, and out of that, and out of my love for America, yeah. I decided to speak up. Yeah. I, decided that, I decided that the only way that things could possibly change is if I, as an individual, I try to encourage other people yeah. to stand up, to speak out. Yeah. So that, that is why we do it. We don't, we don't do it for the publicity. We will do it if no one comes. Well, we don't do it for the money, it has only cost us money. We do it because we love America. Because we do it because we see a country that is, that is fading away. Well, we, we see a government that is mistreating our Constitution and our government. Mistreating the American people. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said, People have two enemies. Criminals and government. So let us tie down the second with the chains of the Constitution so the second does not become the legalized version of the first. That's what we have today. I will start today by reading the First Amendment. The First Amendment is what we stand on. The First, the first Amendment is our very foundation of existence. The First Amendment, freedom of speech, we only have in America. You don't know that. You may have never been out of Michigan. You may have, may have never been out of America. You have probably surely never lived outside of America. I'd rather be in jail. Uh, America is the only place left where you have true freedom of speech. Even in a country like England, if you stand up against Islam, if you burn a Quran out of protest, you will be locked up, put in jail. Right. The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. We're going to prove today, we're going to prove today that there is in our country a respecting of Islam and Sharia. It says right here in our Constitution, the Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Right. That includes Sharia. That includes Sharia law. Yeah. That includes Islamic law. Yeah. People ask me many times, oh, Sharia is not in Dearborn. Yeah. Oh, Sharia is not in America. What are you talking about? Well, we have the Constitution. It's not in America. Study on Sharia law and American state courts by the Center of Security Policy identifies 50 
such appellate court cases in 23 states that involve violations against women and children. So Sharia is alive and active in America. Amen. Are prohibiting the free exercise thereof are abridging the freedom of speech. We have to remember freedom of speech is only good. It is only valid when it makes you mad. Right. Angry. Uh, the freedom of speech is of no good as long as I am talking the party line. As long as I am saying what you agree with. Freedom of speech only has power when it allows me to say what you don't like. Uh, possibly what you don't want to hear. Possibly the very thing that will cause you to think. See, Americans, we've forgotten to think. We don't know how to think. We have computers. Right. We don't know how to multiply, add, and subtract. We have computers. Right. The, the cashier at the restaurant, the cashier at the grocery store, doesn't know how to give you change. The computer tells her what to do. We do not know how to think. And that's what freedom of speech is for. Freedom of speech causes us to get mad. It causes us to begin to think, is that right? Is that wrong? Is what he is saying, is it true? It causes us to think. Now, how do you think? How do you think we got change? Right. Freedom of speech. Or of the press. Freedom of the press. Freedom of the press, though not, to tell us what we should think. Right. Now, not to somehow cover the news at such an angle that it actually manipulates the American people into thinking what they want you to think. Amen. Exactly right, brother. That, that, is, that is not what the news media was supposed to do. The news media is to give us, to the best of their abilities, the facts presenting both sides, presenting what both sides say, and then we are to make up our own mind what is actually right or wrong. Yep. Freedom of the press. Yes. Do we have freedom of the press? Does Islam own great portions of CNN? Oh, yeah. How about the prince that owns Ports of Fox? Right. Terry, on this freedom side. of speech this time. and freedom of the press are the right to pe for people peaceably to assemble. This is, of course, what Islam does not do. If you try to peaceably assemble in Egypt, right. you will be peaceably killed. <laughs> peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. That is our right. We must maintain that. Well, they cannot allow Hillary Clinton, President Obama, anybody else at the UN to stifle, create laws, regulations against freedom of speech. We have a challenge today. We have a challenge on Imam Al Sweeney. He is the Imam of the Islamic Center. I have talked to him several times, and he is supposedly a man of God, a man of peace. I have a challenge on the Imam to unite with me. There is a pastor in Iranian prison, a Pastor Yusuf. Pa Pastor Youssef will be put to death. Why? Has he killed someone? No. Has he murdered someone? Has he raped someone? No. Is he somehow a criminal? No. What in the world has Pastor Youssef done? That the government of Iran will put him to death. He is to be executed. Huh. You know what he did? Put Christ in his life. He, 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 he committed the great crime against Islam. 
Hallelujah. A great, uh, great crime against Islam. He converted from Islam to Christianity. Oh, man. Oh, my Lord. And he was caught doing something terrible. He was caught evangelizing Muslims. Oh, man. Because of that, he will be put to death. I understand that uh, Imam al Sweeney is from Iran. Wow. Uh, he went to school in Iran. According to my conversations with him, he believes in freedom of religion, freedom of speech, speech, he believes in peace, and I challenge him. I challenge him to meet with me. I challenge him to contact his contacts in Iran to get Pastor Yusuf released. I will work with him. I will fly to Iran with him. I challenge him. That if indeed he is a man of peace, then he will intercede for Pastor Yusuf. Right. And Pastor Yusuf will not be killed. Right. If Pastor Yusuf is not released by April the 28th, we have called for a worldwide burning of Qurans and images of Muhammad Hallelujah. in protest. Amen. Hallelujah. That burning will take place in public Amen. in Gainesville, Florida, and around the world. We challenge him. The appeasing. What day is that? April 28th. April 28th. The appeasing of Muslims. The bowing to Islam, which takes place around the world and takes place in Dearborn. Special privileges for Muslims that we believe are unconstitutional. That is one of the reasons that we are here today. Number one right here in Dearborn in the month of August, the month of Ramadan. I have nothing against religion. I have nothing against religious convictions. That's right. I am a pastor. I have been a pastor for 30 or 35 years. I have religious convictions. I have things that I believe are right, things that I believe are wrong, and I am willing to stand for them and die for them. Amen. I am willing to make the necessary sacrifices to do them. We're right with you, brother. So Islam has a tradition called Ramadan. And if you have a religious conviction, your job, your job is to follow your conviction, but not force other people to follow your conviction. In the month of August, with Ramadan, right here in Gainesville, right here in Dearborn, the high school here cancels their football practice because of special Muslim privileges and has football practice at an ungodly hour at 12 o'clock at midnight, from midnight until 4 in the morning. Special privileges for Muslims. Eleven years ago, right here in Dearborn, they started a pilot program concerning special privileges, concerning special meals, halal. They started this eleven years ago. Now there are 32 schools in the Dearborn area offering specially prepared halal meals costing the taxpayers. That's something that we hear by every interview. That is something that we hear every time we come to Dearborn. You're coming to Dearborn is costing us money. You're coming to Dearborn is expensive. Dearborn has no money. The special privileges of the Muslim community has tried to push through, which is their normal agenda worldwide of instituting in the public schools, not private schools, not paid for by private money, public schools, the public schools now have five separate meals. Four of those meals are halal, and one is a regular meal, thus costing the taxpayers of Dearborn $228,000 per year, a city that supposedly has no money for protection. 
we have several hundred death threats. There's a reward on my life for $2.4 million. They have no money for protection, but they have money to serve special meals. Unbelievable. Special privileges for the Muslim community. Foot baths in state funded colleges. These things will not be allowed by any other religion. Now, I am a Christian if I wanted special privileges. If I wanted to go down to the local high school here and hang a cross in the cafeteria, what would happen? There would be a great outcry. And the very first thing that all of the good citizens would say is separation of church and state. Right. That's right. Foot baths. Foot bath in state funded universities. The University of Michigan in Dearborn installed two foot baths, thus costing the taxpayers of Dearborn, who have no money, remember, costing them $100,000. Unbelievable. Did you know that? Keep paying your taxes. Did, did, did you get to vote on that? Oh, isn't that like did, did anybody ask you, did, did you want that? That, that in the University of Michigan, Right in Dearborn, they spent a hundred thousand dollars so Muslims could wash their feet. Appeasing the Muslim community. It's not only wrong, it is dangerous. And, and where does it stop? Minnesota. Minnesota Community and Technical College has a policy that strictly prohibits religious display displays. They have a policy, a very strict policy, that prohibits the displaying of any type of religious symbols. They have even warned against the display or the promoting of any type of religion. So, so what did the Muslims do? What did the radical element of Islam do? What did the Sharia part of Islam do? What did the part of Islam do that wants to push their agenda? What did they do? They threatened the college. That seems to be par for Islam. That if you do something, that if you stand up, the first thing they do is threaten. And it's sad to say that a lot of times in America, the first thing we do is back down to their threat. That's right. The home of the brave and the land of the free, what has happened to us? Land of the coward. We have become the land of appeasement. We have become the land of political correctness. We have become the land that does not stand up and say no. That's right. Our government does not say no. But that is why we are $15.9 trillion in debt. Wow. That is why this administration, President Hussein Obama, has created more debt than George Washington all the way to George W. Bush added together. Unbelievable. Because we cannot say no. We, we cannot say no. Well, we must begin to stand up. We must begin to say no. So the college was threatened. The college received death threats. The college received threats saying the college would be bombed. A few weeks ago, we were to hold a demonstration in Irvine, California at the university because they have a loud mouth radical Muslim who comes there and proclaims death to America and death to Israel. Wow. We were going there to challenge him. What happened? Islam reacted with bomb threats. Huh. 
They closed down 50% of the university and canceled our event. The religion of peace, harmony, and tolerance. The same religion that, that wishes us happy Easter. Exactly Satan's right. Church, the cult of terror. The same religion that has tequila, which means they are allowed to lie. The college received threats saying the college would be bombed if we refused to build this facility. So the college voted. The college used taxpayers' funds to install facilities for Muslims foot washing at taxpayers' expense. These kind of things are going on all around the country. George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Boston University. University of Toledo in Ohio. Eastern State University here in Michigan have all installed foot washing facilities in order to appease Muslims. Unbelievable. At taxpayers' expense. Yeah. Wake up, people. And if we if we want anything at all. And then they removed the Ten Commandments uh, right. from the courthouse. Right, brother. Well, my Muslims are trying to get the Catholic Church to remove the cross from their Catholic hospitals. The Kansas City International Airport added several foot washing basins in restrooms to accommodate a growing number of Muslim taxi drivers. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Muslims demand prayer breaks and other privileges of privately owned companies. These are things that they are doing. In 2008, the company JBS Swift in Colorado, 100 Somalian Muslims. Just as a side note, Somalian Muslims are especially radical. President Obama signed an executive order allowing 60 to 80,000 Somalian Muslims into the country without a background check. Now where the black hawks went down. 100 Somalian Muslims workers were fired after they refused to report to work in protest of Swift's refusal to give them a prayer break during the holy month of Ramadan. A company, it's not a church. A company is not a nonprofit organization, it is not a religious organization. A company is not there to promote religion or discourage a religion. A company is there to produce a product, to provide a service, to make a profit, to pay their employees. But Muslims, no matter where they go, and no matter where they go around the world, they push their agenda upon the society. And that is why. Someone must stand up. Right, brother. 2008, a Muslim teacher in Chicago who had been employed for less than a year requested a three-week unpaid leave to go to Mecca. Her request was denied because it did not meet the requirements of the union contract which gave uniform standards for the leave that apply to all employees. One of the things that we see of the Muslim community, the Muslim community does not want to submit. The Muslim community does not want to integrate, conform to a society. They expect us to integrate and conform to them. The teacher then quit her job and filed a complaint 
with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the U.S. State Department. Well, that's an equal opportunity organization. The U.S. State Department of Justice filed a complaint on behalf of the teacher, which accused the school district of violating her civil rights. The teacher won and was awarded $75,000. Only in America. 2011. In Seattle, Washington, 35 Hertz employees demanded to be paid for prayer breaks. Hertz had already allowed the prayer breaks with pay until the Muslim workers began taking advantage of the company's generosity and did not return to work in a timely fashion. It is a company. It is a company. It is not, again, it is not a social organization. It is not a church. One of the things that we must do, we must stand up against Muslim appeasness, appeasement. We must stand up. We must take our stand. Right. And we must take back America. Hallelujah. In 2011, 22 Islamic workers at a factory in Minnesota, they were fired, claimed they were fired, and forcibly removed from the premises for saying their prayers on the evening. The company had established new break times, and the Friday prayers did not coincide with the Islamic times. Muslims do not submit, even though according to Muslim scholars, Muslim prayer times are not mandatory. Those prayer times are determined by the position of the sun, five times per day, which of course create a great hardship on every company. Right. Even Muslim scholars say that if they are not able to pray at those particular times, they are free to pray at different times. The Muslim Student Association of America, it is a established political organization which desires to impose Muslim rules, regulations, and rituals upon our society. This organization, the MSI, is a well-known Islamic radical group with close ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. According to the MSA Political Action Task Force section on the University of Michigan in Dearborn, according to their website, it declares to stage rallies, protests, and teach-ins to spearhead a united political movement. President Obama said that we are not at war with Islam. That is not true. Islam has one goal. That is world domination. As I said, I lived in Europe for 30 years. During that period, I saw the growth of Islam, the growth of radical Islam. In the country that I lived in, Germany, most of the time, there are now parts of Germany, parts of the cities, where Islam and Sharia rules parts of those cities you cannot go in. In England, Anjan Chowdhury, a well-known radical Muslim, has declared parts of London non-Muslim zones, Sharia zones. It has gotten so bad. And in Germany, the country I was in, that here not recently, 
the Bundes Councilin, Frau Merkel, came out and said, Muslims who live in Germany will not be governed by Sharia. We must wake up. We are on every level of our society. We are losing America as we know it. Right. We must be willing to stand up. It is time to stand up. It is time to pay the price. Right. Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty, though those who would give up, though those who would sit back, those who would listen to the, to the news media, we are mesmerized. Right. We are fed useless information. Right. Useless programs are on information. Right. We are fed their sports programs. As things are going on in our government, like President Obama just signed the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act. Heard of that? The National Defense Authorization Act, which gives the president the power to arrest U.S. citizens and hold them without trial, without disclosing their whereabouts, and without charging them. Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little Temporary safety. Well, why is there not hundreds of people here? That's right. They're scared. Why is there not thousands of people here? Why are people not concerned? Well, why was there not an out great outcry? Well, when the president signs the NDAA National Defense Authorization Act that allows him to come tomorrow, lock me up in prison. Tell no one where I am at, yep. why I have been charged for an indefinite period of time, and all we are concerned about is whether or not Kentucky won the football game. Exactly right, brother. The news media fills us with months and weeks of the Anthony Casey case. Crap. Or the community of Jesse Jackson. <laughs> right. And Sharpton raises up racial tension because of Trey Van Morton and George Zimmerman. Instead of saying, we have the Constitution, we want justice. We have the Constitution. Every man, black or white, is innocent until proven guilty. We cannot move from these fundamental truths. Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. I'm going to leave you with one last quote. This is a quote that applies to today. It fits us exactly to the T as we sit in our chair, drink our beer, eat our potato chips, and watch the game. Right, brother. Church today. This is a quote from Diedrich Bonhoeffer. Diedrich Bonhoeffer was killed in the concentration camp. On April the 19th, 1945, right before the end of the war. I lived 30 years in Germany. The only way the Nazis could take over is because people do not stand up. That's exactly right was not Hitler. It was because people did not stand up. It was because people did not care. It was because of what Diedrich Bonhoeffer said. And he said, first, they came for the communist. But I was not a communist, so I did not speak up. Then they came for the socialist and the trade unionist. But, but, but I, I was neither, so I did not speak up. Right. Well, where do we find ourselves? Right. Well, where, 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 where do we find America? First they came for them, whatever. Nation of soft men. 
Well, for first they took over the Middle East, but that's not us. Yeah, then, then they took over uh, uh, Europe, but that's not us. And now they're here spreading their propaganda, but I can still watch the football game. It's not, not me. That's right. When does it become you? When does it become me? When it's when it's actually when it's when it's too late? Right. But, but I was neither, so I did not speak out. Then they came for the Jews. But I was not a Jew, so I did not speak out. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. People say, why do you do it? Why do you do it? There's no Sharia, there's no Islam, there's no big threat. I agree partly. There's no, there's no big threat at this particular time. And probably we have greater problems than Islam and Sharia. Starting at the very top of our society and government. Starting with our great, great deficit that's going to drive us into a recession and depression if it is not stopped, if we do not have someone who has guts. And that is the sad story of America. We'd have no one in the Tea Party. We have no one in the Republican Party. We have no one in the Democratic Party with guns. Kerry Jones for president. So when will we stand up? When will we do something? Now. We have to do it before it's too late. Because every one of us, sooner or later, will face April 19th, 1945. That's right, soon. There will come a time where it is too late. So let us stand up, let us do something. Well, we thank you for coming today. We would like to, if everyone would allow it, I believe that it is appropriate. This is, after all, Easter weekend. I'd like to end this time with a short prayer. God, we pray for this nation. We pray for our country. God, we pray exactly as Jesus did. He said, let not my will be done, but, but, but let but my Father's will be done. God, we ask that you would continue to lead and guide our nation, our government. God, please help us. We are perhaps a smart nation, a powerful nation, a rich nation. But we cannot do it without God and without the grace of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, thank you very much. If there are any questions, we will be here uh, at least until...